Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Hello and welcome to yet another wonderful edition of the Great Debaters Contest. I am Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Nyambok. So how many times have you dozed off in a literature class? Or asked yourself, of what use is alliteration or symbolism to my life? Today we are questioning the importance of literature studies in our education system. Proposing this motion, we have Storehe Girls High School and opposing this motion, we have Mary Hill Girls High School. And both schools have just one statement. Nothing but love. The first proposer, you have three minutes. Zippo Ragaku from Saray Girls, and today I strongly propose the motion that states, studying literature is of little benefit to students. Let us start by defining some of the terms that we have in our motion. Literature, these are pieces of writing that are valued as works of art, especially novels, plays, and poems. And we have two types of literature. We have fictional literature and non-fictional literature. Fictional literature describes imaginary people and events, but non-fictional literature is all about real people and even events. On to my first point. Bill Beatty once said that the main aim of education is to teach us to think, improve our minds, so as to be able to think for ourselves than to load our memory with thoughts of other men. But what happens when you come to class and you teach me about literature? You're trying to teach me the mindset of the author. What was the author really meaning? What was the author up to when he was portraying this theme in a certain way? So by that, are we really motivating our students to think for themselves? We are only loading their memories with thoughts of other people. By doing this, we are, we are not achieving the main aim of education, as Bill Beats once said. Literature books contain information that tag a certain group in the society. For instance, Self-Defense, it's a novel by Jonathan Kellerman. It contains some characters such as Maurice Lowell who portray and objectify women and bring them out to be these people who can just be used as tools and disposed of at any time. If you are going to have students to sit down in a class and analyze such pieces of literature, what are we going to have? We are going to have some of the students have the mindset that they are, they are bigger than others, that they are in another class and others are in a lower class. By doing this, we are only motivating and encouraging segregation in our society and especially in our schools. And I'm so sure this is not the kind of society that you want to bring up, or is it? I do not think so. We all know that garbage in, garbage out. Literature exposes the rots in the society, yes. But what happens after it exposes them? Some of the students are so curious, they want to feel, how, how does it feel to do these evils? For instance, in the Kiswahili literature book, Damunyeusi by Say, Said A. Mohammed, we have some of the short stories, such as Ndoya Samani and Maeko. These stories depict the sexual activity so graphically, so nice as if it is such, with such enticement and enjoyment. When you're going to teach students this in, their, in class, a teenager will want to go out there and try it. I want to feel what the author was really meaning when saying this. I want to feel what Abu was feeling when learning this. Abu is a character in the, one of these stories. I want to feel what he or she was feeling in such a thing. So what are we doing? We'll only be encouraging immorality and increasing its rate among our students. Is this really what we want? We don't want this. I stopped reading books and I now settle for reviews and magazines. I still have enough communication ammunition to argue if necessary. This is from Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill is one of the great men in our history books. And I share the same school of thought with Winston Churchill. Come and join me. Thank you. We can now have the opening statements of the opposing team. My name is Zibel Mkandutia from the Mary Hill Girls High School, and I'm here to oppose this motion that states that studying literature is of little benefit to students. I'd like by start uh, to give you a story, a real life story that really happened this morning. Sorry, hey girls, we are very sorry you got late. This is how it went. We were at the bus. We went very excited, of course, took the soda and bread, we reached up to Thika Town. Then our boss decides to call us back that from fours are not supposed to come. We went back to school. We were supposed to go back to church. We were crying. We didn't want to miss this chance. I specifically didn't want to miss this chance of participating in the quarterfinals. So what did I do? I kept on holding on to hopeless hope. Till the last minute, I was allowed to come as the only student. So sad. That's the end of my story. But from this story, what can you learn from it? 
that I, I was hopeful, wasn't I? I was, you know, I told myself it's better to have been buoyed up by hope, the horizon seeming so limitless for me, than to have lived in the gray world of timid fearfulness. What can you say? There's a theme of frustration to our teacher, the theme of frustration to these other students. This styled, you know, this vivid description of what has really happened. What am I trying to say in short with this story? That studying literature is actually boosting our ability to be able to analyze. How would you have known that I am very hopeful, if not for all of our literature? Definitely, you learn the skills of analyzing and the skills of critical analysis of the story. We have creative responses. We have visualization of these actions. You can just imagine us with soda and bread and then coming out of that bus, not going anywhere. That's what I'm trying to say. It boosts these skills. That is why you need to know about Rusha Vashnadze and that Matela Bashwili to be able to build these skills and to expand your memory holding capacity. It's, you know, it's very useful for your cerebrum for your information. And uh, uh, when you read a book like the short stories, I go to a story like The Two Stories of a House by Leila Abu Zaid from Morocco. I am able to look at their culture, especially the religious aspect, where they believe in this thing, swearing by Mecca. This way, I'm able to understand their culture. I'm talking about a book like River and the Source. It's from the Luo community. The river between was from the Tikuyu community. If I get myself engrossed in all these kinds of books, am I not trying to understand different cultures? Am I not trying to make myself cope with people from different areas? I'm going to understand their way of doing things because I got this from literature. Now, uh, we have things like literal allusion, like it's better to have loved and lost than not to have loved at all. The same thing I'm telling you, it's better to have hopes and to actually look at the positive side of this thing. It has benefits, you cannot deny. Time now for rebuttals. Proposers, you have three minutes. My name is Susan Wariera from Starhe Girls. To the first opposer, you're saying that literature has taught you to analyze things. My question is, what is the importance of analyzing without giving me a solution? Yeah, we'll be taught how to analyze, but what solution are you giving me? You're talking about preserving the culture. Currently, due to the rural urban migration, we really have no culture to protect because most of the things, most of our culture has been eroded. What culture are we really trying to keep? On to my first point. Let's think about this. Should I study Shakespeare or human anatomy? Shinwa Achebe or agriculture? Ngugiwa Dhyongo or physics, engineering, chemistry or biology? Should, will I become the Shakespeare poet after high school? Or am I going to be an engineer, a teacher, a doctor, a lawyer that my world, my country, my continent wants me to be. What am I trying to say? It's that literature, we are not saying it's of no importance, but it's of little importance. Currently in Kenya, we are moving towards Vision 2030. We need engineers, we need doctors, we need lawyers. We should best, we should, we should, we should first deal with the first things. There's some subjects that are worth other than literature. Secondly, Education is what remains in one's mind after one has forgotten what they learned in schools. This is Albert Einstein who said this. In our, current society, in our current Kenya education system, we find that in secondary school, we have what we study as set books. In these set books, you are taught how to analyze characters, character traits, the settings. But what next after you finish Form 4? You go outside there, when you get a job, is there anywhere you are going to be asked what are the character traits of so and so? Literature is not only a gateway to fantasy, but a gateway to reality. You know, literature has given us this aspect as students just to fantasize. You read something about the goddesses, about love. Students now have become fantasizers in class. It has shifted us from the real world. All we do is fantasize about these things. Indeed, by you telling me to sit in a classroom and study literature, that is of no importance. We are not saying that it's of no importance, it's of little importance. So let us study some things that are going to help us achieve Vision 2030 to boost our education, our country, our continent, and the world as a whole. Indeed, studying literature in schools is of little importance to students. Thank you.
Opposition, time for your cross-examination. Now, Susan, uh, I want to bring to your attention that oral literature has debate in it, and debate is analysis. So I don't know why you're saying that debate does not help you to analyze. That means you get off the stage. Now, mm, again, I'm surprised you're using literature against literature. <laughs> but it's a good style all the same, but it doesn't work here. And you see, you've talked about medicine and all that. Are you aware that Margaret Ogola is a medical doctor and she's written what you're analyzing right now and it is river and the source? <laughs> now, <laughs> away from that. <laughs> now, you talked about Churchill. Churchill's statement is in history book, history, and it has the word story in it. Story is an aspect of literature. So what is the purpose trying to tell us? Okay, trying. I'm saying trying because they have not told us anything so far. And um, I, want, <laughs> I want to talk about this. No, literature. Let's look at literature. The way I'm speaking to you, I am using literature. You're sitting there and you're laughing. It is literature. Now, let's look at different books that we learn in school. In fact, I want to quote this. The first speaker talked about fictional books and the one that made people, you know, fight and all that. We do not have action no, books, or that is set books in, in the school system. So the example you gave actually is far away from what we learn in school. I'm even wondering what books you analyze because it is not in our school. Or is it in your schools? Okay, <laughs> anyway, she will have to answer that. Again, you have talked about literature <laughs> leading to people being immoral and all that and what we read. Now, let me ask you, if you put a golden ring on a pig's toe and it gets dirty, do you say that the, the ring made the pig dirty or the pig made the ring dirty? Literature is that, like that golden ring that if you put it on people, no matter how you try, it is gold, right? But if people take it negatively, it's not your problem. Again, what are you trying to tell us? Literature helps people earn money. Are you saying that we do away with these judges because actually what they are doing is analyzing an aspect of literature? So Judge Booker, go home because the proposer said so. <laughs> you see? <laughs> so I want to tell the, <laughs> the proposers Actually, what you're doing, in fact, literature helps people to be more, you know, mannered. Instead of telling you you're ugly, I will tell you you're of humble looks. Instead of telling you you're fat, I will tell you you're well built, you know, and it saves us all. Thank you. It is so convenient to be born and person, and person. We thank the safari come for M-Pesa, M-Pesa, oh, M -Pesa. Take part in the M Challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. This is my question. Biology, physics, important to you, interesting. But where will you ever go, train as a doctor, in a hospital, in an office, and be asked to define binomial nomenclature? Thank you. Thank you, I'm Faith Vugutsa from Saray Girls. We know that everything that has an advantage has a disadvantage. They are giving you the advantages. You're not taking us any of your point. You're just telling them the extreme opposite of what they're trying to tell you. Second, literature is not spoken. Literature is written. Thirdly, someone talked of Margaret A. Ogola. Did she use the literature to become a doctor? No. She studied a course in medicine, not literature. May we have the third proposer take the stage. About training as a doctor, it is very true that as a doctor you may not be asked how to define binomial nomenclature. So, as this doctor, you're going to use the information that you got and analyzing it and use it now to define nomenclature, but in a different way in that you're going to use this message, this information to treat your patients. In hospital, you don't ask questions. You find solutions to help these patients. Thank you. Okay. Actually, it's, it's, 
judges and everybody in the audience, it's very true that literature is like a mirror of the society. It tries to show the rot in the society and what the society has become to be. But in the morning, I know everybody looked herself in the mirror. Judge Major, you looked yourself in the mirror and, you know, truth be said, you have a well-rounded face. Now, when you look yourself in the mirror, the, you know, you, you, you saw yourself. Did you change anything about it? You cannot change anything about it. Now, Judge Minor, the truth still prevails that you have very good eyes, very beautiful eyes. And you looked yourself in the mirror, you saw those beautiful eyes. Did you change anything about it? You did not change it. Now, Judge Booker, you're so beautiful. I know that's what you looked yourself in the mirror to confirm that you are. And the, the fact is that you are. Now, maybe if you wanted to change your nose or maybe your eyes, could you do it today morning? You could not do it. And now that's what literature is trying to do. Literature is trying to show us the road in the society. What the city has tried to become, but it's not giving us the power to change whatever we are seeing. Yes, we are accepting that this is happening, but now does it give us the power to change whatever we are seeing in the society? No, it's not. No. Literature is trying to fill the student's mind with the road and everything in the society, telling them that you are not important. You look at Magreto Gola's book, The River and the Soul, speaking about wife inheritance. Now, it's very true that, all, that, that literature is trying to fill the students with all this information. Fine, we accept. It is of importance, yes, but of little benefit because after filling my mind with that, you don't give me a solution to help myself and solve this situation. That is what simply literature is doing in our lives. And students in the house, can you tap your brain? Can you tap the power that you have in within you? Because people are not going to instill other people's mind in you and not give you solution and expect to become a better person in this world. Now tell us whether good should come down. Jesus come down because there is trouble. There is actually trouble. Judges, there is trouble in the house because if these are the kind of people and leaders we are bringing up for Vision 2030, people will only tell us the importance of literature but not the solution they give. We are doomed. Come on, Kenya, wake up, please. Wake up. Thank you. The opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. Let us embrace literature. These are some of the statements, the quotes that are found in the same literature books that you're against. If only we could embrace literature and utilize the lessons from literature, our society would be a much, much better society. Now, somebody said that literature is not spoken, it's written. Have you heard of oral literature? Oral poems, for instance, Moving on, <clears throat> listen to this, my lovely audience, and please put yourself in the shoes of the writer. When I see the beauty in the eyes of my beloved's face, I drop forward from my hands. The son of a bull has finished me. Did you hear that? Yeah, interesting. That is literature entertaining, relaxing, refreshing. Go back to those old days when just before you slept, your mom had a storybook and read to you the hair and the hyena. How did it feel? Awesome, beautiful. Now you want us to have a society whereby there are no songs, no poems, no reading, not even a debate like this? It would be such such a boring world. Don't you agree? Now, you gave an example of a medical doctor and asked how does that relate to, a history, to, to literature. Now, I'm trying to figure out a chemistry class and a literature class. You think about it, how many times have you dozed off in a chemistry class? Personally, I am always alert in literature classes. Why? It's just interesting. You think about how critical literature is. You think of a character in a book and their characteristics. This can be applied in our lives, by the way. Now, when you meet people, how do you manage to get along with them? It's literature. And to give a quick example, Margaret Ogola is a doctor studied medicine, but she has to create a rapport with her patients. Literature. Thank you. We'll now get closing statements from the proposers. You have one minute. 
this is interesting. What if I have a few words of Shakespeare and a few words from Gugiwa Thiongo and also more words from Margaret Ogola? Is this helping me save the poverty levels in Kenya? Is it helping me save the poor governance in Africa, in Africa as a continent, Judge Booker? Is it helping me in any way save the situation of civil wars in Somalia? Now that is the problem. That is where the problem is, and that is why at high time teachers in the house, if you love your students, do something about this. Now I just want to let you know one thing, that it said people do not care how much you know. They like to know how much you care. Now to our opposers, we like to know how much they care about the situation that students feel. Experience is the best teacher and I feel it. And that is why sometimes I speak out of pain because I know how much I strain to study literature, yet I need to do some other important thing as a leader. <laughs>